We all have our own idea of a dream house, but these days the chances of buying it may seem remote. It's a pretty looking house, isn't it? Very much the kind of thing that we'd be looking for. You know, it's still really not affordable. But what if you really need more space? We use this as a sitting room, a dining room, a kitchen. It just simply doesn't work anymore with a family. Recession or not, in this series, I'm going to prove you can get more hats for less money. So you're going to try and create your dream home yes. out of your own house yep. that's as good as this, but is going to cost half the amount of money. Yep. And highlight some of the pitfalls which can turn your dream into a nightmare. When he said the figure, he said £15,000, I thought, <gasps> how much? It is possible to double the size of your house for half the cost of moving to your dream house. If you follow some basic rules, you can get more space without breaking the bank and turn a much lesser home into the home of your dreams. Got a bit of plaster and a wiring to do. Got the tosh and a splash and a bit fine. <laughs> and think if you extend your own home, you won't have to pay stamp duty, moving costs or an unaffordable mortgage. Yeah, that looks spectacular. So you really can end up with the home of your dreams. So is this your dream come true? Yes, it's all that I want. Britain's homeowners, you don't have to be content with what you've got. Last year, planning permission was granted to more than 170,000 home extension projects. So your dream home is very much within your reach. Before you write off a house because you think it's not quite big enough or it doesn't quite suit your family, bear in mind you might be able to change it really radically you might be able to achieve something pretty spectacular without breaking the bank. I'm with two homeowners hoping to save cash by doubling their space for half what it would cost to buy their unaffordable dream house. I think we're really lucky in the fact that we've got this opportunity to recreate our own home. And I'll be helping the Alford family in Sheffield who are aiming to extend their 1930s house. Their plan includes increasing the number of bathrooms from three to a whopping seven. I know I've got too many bathrooms. <laughs> but first, I'm off to Wembley in North London, where the Siddiqui family want to make their whole house twice the size. Accountant Faz and teacher Sharma moved into their 1930s semi-detached after their wedding in 1998. Once upon a time, this house had loads of room for us, didn't it? Mm, we were swimming in it. <laughs> Fast forward 13 years, three kids and more than 40 relatives who drop by for frequent family get-togethers. And their once spacious home has shrunk. Some of them are in the sitting room, some of them in the kitchen, some of them in the bedroom. I think that's the only way we can really mm. accommodate everybody at the moment. You might think it's impossibly expensive to double the size of your house, and it's true that the costs on big projects can go through the roof. But follow the golden rules, and you can end up with the space you want for far less money than you think. Just around the corner from their Wembley home is Faz and Sharma's dream house. Hi. Hello. Lovely to meet you. Hello. Hello. It's so lovely to meet you too. At 2,000 square foot, it's almost double the size of their own house. This is kind of the house that has got the amount of space or the size in terms of the number of rooms and, and the look. It just um, looks like a very warm and welcoming house, comfortable. This house looks like it's about 2,000 square feet and will be worth about £800,000 to yes. buy, whereas your house isn't that big, is it? No, our house is half the size and probably valued at half the amount. So how much more money can you get your hands on? We could probably afford up to another £150,000. So here are the sums. The Siddiqui's house is worth around £400,000. To sell up and move to their £800,000 dream home, they'd need to find an extra £400,000. But they have less than half that amount. So you really need to double the size of your house for about half the money. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, maybe yeah. less than half the money. Yeah. Great. Tall order. Gonna have a look at okay. that. 
Right now, Faz and Sharma's need for more space is glaringly obvious. Downstairs, there's an open-plan living room dining room with a kitchen. Upstairs, there are three bedrooms and only one bathroom. The Siddiqui's have a hugely ambitious plan to double their space with not one, but three extensions. From the outside, you can see straight off, this should be a great house to supersize. A house like this has got masses of potential. You can see there's enough head height in the loft so that you could do a loft conversion. We've got a single storey garage that means you could possibly build on top. So if you can't afford a bigger house, but you need a bigger house, buying a house like this with all this potential and extending it is a really cunning plan. Inside, I can understand why this family are desperate for more space. This is the room that I really hate. This galley kitchen is where Sharma spends around half her time. And when you have lots of family around? It's really cramped. I mean, you can see there's the three of us in here and there's really not much room for movement in here. Um, and when I'm cooking for sort of, you know, the 30 odd people, the hob is actually just not big enough because I tend to have very, very large pans, especially when I'm doing rice. You know, I'd really love to be able to have a big, wide hob. Upstairs, there's only one bathroom. Do you find five people sharing one bathroom tricky? Yeah, it's not only that, if you've got two or three people having a shower consecutively, the water goes cold for the fourth or the fifth person, you know? You need to future-proof this house. If it's going to be your dream house, it needs more bathrooms, doesn't Definitely. it? Definitely. They want to extend in three directions for £150,000, so they'll need to keep a tight rein on spending. The first extension at the side of the house will add more living space downstairs and a bedroom and ensuite upstairs. At the back of the house, the kitchen and dining room will be knocked through and a rear extension will make this a massive space. Finally, a loft extension will give them a master bedroom and another much needed ensuite. The Siddiqui's have no experience of a big build like this, so it's going to be a bumpy ride. I fear the plans they have now will cost them rather more than they've budgeted for, and there are a couple of major issues with them already. The thing that really concerns me about this layout is that you've got the loo opening into this open-plan living room, and when Granny and Uncle Fred are all having their lunch, for someone to go mm. to the loo and have a little, mm. you know, <laughs> nasty in there, is, <laughs> oh, it's going to be really... No-one's going to want to use it. <laughs> I would have thought that would be really embarrassing. Mm. Mm. We've sort of put it there, but not with a huge amount of thought. We just couldn't work out where, where it should go. The other thing that worries me is the number of internal walls they're planning to knock down. I understand why you want this sense of space, but yeah. you're taking this wall down and taking this yeah. wall down. Is there a reason why you wanted so many walls down? Well, I just wanted to have a big ki kitchen space. And the downside to taking both walls, you're going to need a massive steel, which is going to be incredibly expensive. Mm. Mm. Like many people, I'm not sure the Siddiqui's realise how much knocking walls down can cost. In this case, they'll need to spend thousands on steel beams just to hold the house up. You've got a budget of 150000 How important is it to, that you manage to create your dream home within that budget? Well, I mean, really our, important. our budget is fixed at 150000 so we have to do it within that budget. So if the money runs out and you've only got half of this done, what will happen? We just have to live within whatever we've managed to achieve. So you'll have to live in a half-done house? Yeah. Yes. It's clear that going over budget on this build would be disastrous. The problem is, I think their plans as they stand will cost them more than they've budgeted for. Sarah's entitled to her opinion and her ideas. You know, just because they don't necessarily marry up with ours doesn't mean they're terrible. Mm. We just might not decide that we want to go with them. I'm also not sure a huge, oversized kitchen is going to give them quite the dream home they so badly want. I don't think the plans they've got are quite achieving what they are looking to achieve. They've gone just far too far, which is costing a fortune in terms of steels to engineer all those walls to come down. Over in Sheffield, another couple are desperate for more space for their big family. You're all right. 
Louise and Paul Alford bought their 1930s four-bed detached a year ago. We saw this one and fell in love with it, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, the location was um, spot on and the, um, a lot of potential with the house, so that kind of grabbed both of us. With three growing kids, they're aiming to double their bathrooms as part of an ambitious £150,000 build. Paul works in the book trade and travels a lot. He's from Australia, and when the house is finished, it'll be a home from home for his Aussie family. The main reason for the size of the house and making sure all the bedrooms have their own bathrooms and their own space has been so that Paul's family will feel more welcome when they come here. In Louise's posh neighbourhood, she's surrounded by her idea of a dream house. Beautiful, spacious homes. She doesn't want to move, but instead she wants to replicate the surrounding houses. And what the house looks like from the outside is very important to her. To sell their £675,000 house and move to their dream house, they would have had to find another £600,000. Their budget for this build is £150,000, with a substantial amount being spent on plumbing for the loos. The dream house that we're building um, is really important um, for us to, uh, to get right. They're forging ahead with remodelling their 1930s house, along with a two-storey extension. But it isn't easy for the family to live on site with the builders. Chris Day, it's fine, cos her room's fine. Fraser doesn't really mind because he'll just play wherever he is. George is the one that's really suffering. We've now come through one of the finished walls. I'm sure we'll be able to patch that up. But they've already run into problems. Thanks so much. And Louise is looking for help. Hi. Lovely to meet you. Yes, I'm Jim. Hi, Sarah. Lovely to get... This is great. What a gorgeous house. It will be, eventually. <laughs> Louise's once beautiful 1930s house is covered in crumbling render. A huge job. We are really worried about the rendering on the house because um, we don't know how much it's going to cost, so we are concerned that it is going to blow the budget. It is tricky, the render, because you need to get it right. Yeah. And there's no doubt that if you use the right render on this house, it will be beautiful and worth a lot more money. Yeah. And if you get it wrong, it's going to look a right mess, to yeah. be honest. Louise's house has rough cast render with the stones already mixed in. This is different from Pebble Dash, where the stones sit on top. Either way, the whole lot has to come off. There's no way you're going to get consistency between the old and the new. No. And really, if you want to make the whole house look totally unified and as though yeah. it's all original, you kind of need to start again, really. Yeah. If you're planning to render your house, get advice on the right type of product for your walls. These can include lime, cement and polymer renders. Allow enough drying time. And start rendering from the top of your home and work down to minimise damage. There are some fantastic products around on the market at the moment. Yeah. Um, one of them is this. This is rough cast, so it's, it's got the grit in it, yeah. but it's coloured all the way through. This would be the right thing, yeah. I think, to put on the outside of your house. It won't need repainting, and it'll look beautiful. It is just what I wanted, not as rough as that looking, and, and we'll still make it look like it's, it's believable to, to the original house. It's such a vast amount of yeah. house that you've got to render. You can't yeah. afford to do it twice. It's really important that Louise gets the huge job of rendering right but I'm far more worried about what's going on inside the house. The ground floor plans for the extended kitchen diner look fine. Next door, the old garage and laundry will be demolished to build a two-storey side extension. This will have a gym with a bathroom and upstairs a new master bedroom with an ensuite bathroom. The four existing bedrooms are being moved around to make room for three ensuites. That's a lot of bathrooms. I'm a bit worried it's going to be more like a hotel than a home. There's going to be five bedrooms upstairs, 
four of which will have ensuite bathrooms and then there's a family bathroom as well. Um, so you've got five bedrooms, five bathrooms upstairs. Yes. You're yeah. very dirty, your family. <laughs> Don't be at the end of that. <laughs> Two teenage girls. <laughs> Don't right. need to say So you've got seven bathrooms in this house and, yeah. and five bedrooms, which is quite a lot. Yeah. I wonder if this house needs so many bathrooms or whether some of the spaces could be put to better use. I know I've got too many bathrooms. <laughs> I know that, she doesn't have to tell me that. But, you know, if she wants to break the news to the girls and that one of them's not going to have one, then she can try that. I'd like to witness that. <laughs> it's Louise's house, but five bedrooms and seven bathrooms seems quite extravagant to me. I'm with two big families who are aiming to double the size of their homes for half the cost of moving. If they follow some basic rules, they can end up with the house they want at a price they can afford. In Wembley, Faz and Sharma have started their six-month £150,000 build by demolishing the garage to make room for one of the three extensions. This one goes on the side. I'm really apprehensive about the project. It's such a big build. You've got such a laid-back, calm manner, mm. whereas I really panic about things and think about things to the nth degree. Mm. And in Sheffield, the Alfords are extending their home to make family life more comfortable and cleaner. Louise wants seven bathrooms. I know I've got too many bathrooms. <laughs> I know that, she doesn't have to tell me that. I think at least one of these seven bathrooms could be turned into something much more useful for a big family. It might be more practical for this house to have an upstairs laundry room in this room instead of another bathroom. In America, they think that the British are completely bizarre having all their laundry done downstairs because all the dirty clothes are upstairs. So right. they kind of go, yeah. why would you take it all downstairs and then bring it all back upstairs again? Along with a whopping seven bathrooms for her five-bed house, Louise is also planning to have a gym on the ground floor of the new extension. So is this doors here? This yes. There's going to be um, bifolding doors on here and bifolding doors on the kitchen, so there'll be kind of a courtyard area here. God, I think you're absolutely mad to have <laughs> such a beautiful room as a gym. Do you use the gym a lot? I mean, many, many hours a day. No. I and mean, this is just going to be beautiful with this secluded little courtyard. Yeah. Yeah, I think we might have to have a rethink about this. Mm. It's an unusual idea to use the room with the best view of the garden for a gym. This place is in danger of feeling more like a hotel with every room I see. With all those bathrooms, Louise has no choice but to tread the well-worn path to the nearest tiling showroom. Out of the seven bathrooms, we've done four now, so we've got three left to finish. I've chosen everything that I like so far, so it's quite difficult. I'm running out of ideas a bit. Eloise, come from another bathroom? Yes. Okay. Bathroom number five. Right. <laughs> Louis Kerman picking seven bathrooms is quite, it's like a mini guest house. Um, it's not many people who have the seven bathrooms, but we've picked seven different ranges for her. Uh... It's much easier and cheaper to choose tiles from the same range for all your bathrooms as it avoids wastage. Make sure you ask about deals on X display or clearance stock. And if you're after a luxury tile on a budget, check out cheaper look-alike or composite finishes, which can look just as good as the real thing. For more information about this show or increasing your floor space, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash Sarah. In Wembley, the Siddiqui's huge build of three extensions is fast taking shape. Really looking forward to seeing how Faz and Shama have got on since I was last here. There's quite a lot of slightly bizarre things going on with their plans. There was a loo that was opening out into the sitting room. There were a lot of walls that were coming down, possibly too many, and a lot of steel work that would cost a lot of money. I'm hoping they've had a bit of a rethink. Thanks very much. Bye. How are you? Hi, Sarah. Good to see you. You too. Yeah, fantastic progress. Look at that. They've done a lot since the last yeah. time you came. It's the layout to the rear extension that I'm most concerned about. 
They want to knock down most of the internal walls to create one vast open plan living space. So this is going to be your kitchen that, yeah. dining oh. area and then into your living room, isn't it, here? Yeah. When I looked out the window and saw the wall coming up, I thought, oh, God, that doesn't actually look as wide as I thought it was going to be. Mm. But then I've got to keep reminding myself that this wall is actually going to be gone um, and my kitchen will be a lot wider. So do you think it might be about time to work out what the layout is now that the building's going up? <laughs> yes, miss. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the living room wall. Many people find it hard to visualise their plans on paper. So I want to help Faz and Sharma understand what could be a major problem with their layout. This is the hallway that you've got planned. And then you're hoping to have a downstairs loo here. So if we put this in, and then you've got your living room here. Yeah. Personally, I'm not a fan of Faz's idea of having the new downstairs loo opening into the living space. So this is the layout that you initially had planned. <laughs> yeah. I think the thing that works least is the fact that if someone was, if Grandad was sitting doing a poo, someone's <laughs> sitting there and they can wave and have a chat <laughs> to each other. And he'd ask you to, to pass some more loo roll. Loo! You can have a little chat, couldn't you? Is this on the loo? <laughs> <laughs> that could work quite well. <laughs> the rest of this six-month build, though, is no laughing matter. Faz and Sharma are determined to have one big open plan space. If they knock down so many internal walls, they'll have to shell out thousands on steelwork to hold up the corner of the building. I think we're really lucky in the fact that we've mm. got this opportunity mm. to recreate our own home yeah. and then have rooms as we'd like to have them. They're mortgaged to the hilt to finance this build. What we were proposing to do is actually open up all of this. I'm this a bit worried that Faz is making things up as he goes along, which could soon tip them over budget. It's kind of, it's just like an ongoing process. If we want to move like an internal wall here or there, I think the build is quite good about it. With any project, it's essential to have a schedule of works with all the build stages and agreed deadlines. Make sure you get a weekly update and have a contingency plan in case work overruns. The Sadiqis are at the point when they must decide whether to go ahead and demolish the wall that separates the kitchen from the living room. Doing so will be expensive and it will also make an incredibly echoey and noisy space when their relatives are in full party mode. But there is hope. They seem to be having second thoughts. So I think the advantages then of keeping this wall, it sections off the kitchen area completely, but it then doesn't impinge on the living space over there. If it was open plan, it would just be too close to the living yes. space. Yeah. So it's decision time. It's probably better having the existing wall in place. Mm. Then we lose the open plan. Yep. OK. Leaving big decisions like this to the very last moment is a surefire way to burn through their £150,000 budget. If that happens, could the Siddiqui's end up living in a half-finished house? Gone over budget, roughly, how much do you think that is? It's going to be around the £15,000-plus mark. Oh, gosh. Yes. I'm with two homeowners aiming to double their space without breaking the bank. In Wembley, Shama and Faz are halfway through their ambitious six-month triple build. So far, we've knocked some of their more bizarre ideas on the head. So this is the layout that you initially had planned. Yes. Grandad was sitting doing a poo. Someone's <laughs> sitting there and they can wave and have a chat to each other. <laughs> and today, the joiners are busy in the loft, building the new master bedroom. Losing the loft spreads fear amongst most of us. Suddenly, you've got nowhere to hide your stuff. But I'm hoping to show them that they need not worry. So I want to come and show you this house because, well, it's a beautiful house and hopefully it'll be very inspiring, but also there's a few really clever solutions to storage and I'm hoping you'll find it inspiring anyway. Loft conversions are a golden opportunity for you to create ingenious built-in storage where you least expect to find it. Now, obviously, you're in the eaves here. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly the right height for shoes. Every nook and cranny has, um, fully has utilized. been fully wow. utilised. So that's fantastic. I could really live with something like that. Mm. And the other thing they've got here, which is really clever, because there's a big bit of loft space that wasn't used. Oh, gosh. But over here wow. is this storage, and you can walk across the gangplank. That is fantastic. Amazing. So you can have all your stuff stored. Yeah. Really and easily. it'll still be completely out of sight. Yeah. Sharma and Faz's love conversion will have an ensuite, and you can squeeze storage into the tiniest of spaces. Oh! Wow. Oh, look at that! That's really good. Every time there's a nook or a cranny or a little gap, mm. don't think, oh, we'll fill it in. Yes. Think, mm, can we turn that into a clever bit of storage? Yeah. Mm. So yeah. don't waste any space at all. And the kitchen holds more surprises. Oh my gosh, look at that. Can you imagine getting rid of all your worktop? You just, yeah. I could keep all my lentils and rice, just like this. The amount of storage space you've got here, that means there's absolutely no clutter at all mm. then in the kitchen. I mean, I don't ever remember my worktop having no, nothing, nothing on, nothing. Yeah. ever. If you're planning a loft conversion like Faz and Sharma, check you have enough head height. A basic rule of thumb is 2.3 metres. The average cost of a loft conversion is between 30 and 40,000 pounds. Check with your local authority, but you may well not need planning permission, although all loft conversions need to meet building regulations. And don't forget to budget for extras like bespoke fixtures and fittings and an improved hot water system if you want a bathroom. In Sheffield, it isn't just the inside of Louise's house that needs my help. Bit shorter, take one less. Outside, the old render is being painstakingly chipped off before a fresh coat can be applied on the whole property. The tricky part is recreating the look of the original render on the whole house to blend the old and the new. Getting it wrong can cause a dramatic drop in the house's value. So far, Louise has decided on which product to use. Sarah's advice to go for the through colour render, that was really good advice because we are looking for a low maintenance product. From that now, exactly what finish, exactly what colour, that's kind of what we need the advice on now really. With Louise still undecided about which finish and colour to choose, I'm hoping to help her make the right choice. The cost of rendering this place is around £19,000, so Louise has to get it right first time. I was thinking we'd look at all the different finishes that you yep. can achieve. Also because it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> the first option is to lose the rough cast look and go for a smooth finish. Originally the house was quite a thick dash on it and I did think that we'd just complete the whole house like that but when you kind of see it a bit smoother, it just looks a bit cleaner. I'm kind of going off that original idea now. Rendering the outside of houses has been around since Roman times and is traditionally a mix of lime or cement plus sand and water. So, medium option is that you let it half set like this. Yeah. And here, where it's pretty much set, and then you scratch it, so... Which takes, takes the smoothness here off and just yeah. makes it a bit more like a... A bit more texture, isn't it? smoother render. I do prefer that. It's not as thick as the original rendering, but... The smooth, I think, would just be too modern. So do you think this is the one? Yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. Would look great. Yeah. Along with the finish, the colour of your render can radically affect the value of your home. It's good to see Louise has decided to go for a render which will have the colour mixed through to save on repainting in the long run. But which colour has she finally decided to go for? I kind of like grey. There's another house down the road that's a, a quite a light grey that I really like. The danger with grey is that it could look a little bit like Fresh. a really cheap yeah. red on it and couldn't be bothered to paint it. It needs painting, <laughs> yeah. It is probably the biggest decision that we're going to have to make. So it's got to be right. It has. Yeah. yeah you don't want to render it twice, do you? No, definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> no. In Wembley, two months into their six-month build, disaster has struck at the Siddiquis.
If the loo in the living room wasn't bad enough, Faz has had another unusual idea for the first floor. He's demolished all the walls because the doors he bought were too big to fit the door frames. Faz decided against trying to exchange the doors for ones that actually fitted. So what I asked the builder to do is see if he can open out the existing openings to accommodate the new doors. The walls, it transpires, are not strong enough to withstand heavier doors. So what they've had to do is demolish those walls entirely. There seem to be rather a lot of heart-ruling head purchases that might give them a very nasty shock when it comes to totting up their spend. Faz's door disaster is one of their most expensive mistakes. The lesson learned is think ahead a little bit more as well. Mm. We've gone over budget on a lot of the things. We're not substantially over, but, but we are over. So roughly how much do you think that is? Going to be around the 15,000 plus mark. Oh my gosh. Okay. And all of that's going to have to come from somewhere. When he said the figure, he said £15,000, I thought, oh, how much? You know, it's like, that was way more than I was... You know, you just don't realise that those small amounts can add up to so much. Faz is supposed to have been on top of this. I don't know whether he realised that th th this was happening, because I really didn't. Sharma and Faz are learning the hard way that a bargain isn't a bargain if it isn't in the budget. 50% off uh, something is only a good deal if it's 50% off what we were initially expecting to spend. Whereas 50% off something that was vastly out of our budget is going to be a road to ruin. It's vital to keep track of what you're spending. And unless they get hold of their £150,000 budget, this family could end up living on a building site. Over in Sheffield, Louise Alford's 12-month project to vastly extend the family home for £150,000 is almost finished. Whichever way you look at it, having a five-bedroom house with seven bathrooms is completely bonkers. I'm just hoping that the outside and the rendering make a bit more sense, because otherwise it could all look a bit of a mess. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, thank Good you. you. Very well. Thank you. When I first met Louise, the outside of her 1930s house was covered in crumbling rough cast render. But now the original house and extension have been transformed. It's huge. Yeah. Now, it was always really important to you to have a, a faithful extension, one that yeah. didn't feel like it was very obviously a new addition to the original house. Yeah. And you have pulled yeah. that off. It's brilliant. Louise has gone for a cement-based render with silicon to make it more water repellent and chosen a textured finish. If you had got the render wrong on the outside and it would look absolutely dreadful yeah. and it would seriously impact on any chance that you would ever have of selling it. Yeah. It was quite important. Yeah, that was a pretty pretty bad week when they started putting that on because you don't know and if it would have looked a mess I would have had to do it again. You decided to go with grey. Yeah, well I'd always had grey in my mind. These houses around here would have been white. We looked at a lot of whites, off-whites, creams which tend to be a lot of the properties here but um, it just all looked a bit same and... I think it's a really nice contemporary version of what would have been here originally, so... Yeah. You've pretty much nailed outside. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing inside. Yeah, take a look. Will it be a home or a hotel? On the ground floor, they've transformed their old tiny kitchen. <laughs> to create a huge open-plan kitchen and living space. And upstairs, extending and changing the layout has increased their bedrooms from four to five. And now they have more than twice as many bathrooms from three to a hotel like seven. 
So you weren't too worried about a house looking like a hotel with so many bathrooms? Yeah, I didn't think about it like that, but um, it just kind of works, if you know what I mean. And I haven't got a bathroom fetish at all. <laughs> I haven't. Seriously, really? I haven't. Really? <laughs> it was really important that you could have relatives and friends from Australia to stay, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, we want people to want to come and not feel like they're imposing and they want to be able to have their own space. Nothing's going to convince you that seven bathrooms for a five-bedroom house is a good idea. Personally, I would have had a laundry room upstairs instead. However, I haven't got loads of Australians coming to stay, so, yeah. so maybe that's why it makes sense. Yeah. I have to hand it to Louise. The house looks stunning and will be fabulous for all those guests. But has she managed to pull this off for half the cost of moving? To sell their £675,000 house and move to a luxury five-bed house in this neighbourhood, they would have had to find another £600,000. Now they've got the space they need for £153,000, less than half the cost of moving. I was a bit concerned coming here today about what Louise might have done. But whilst we don't agree on everything, the house looks fantastic. They now have a house that perfectly suits their family and along the way have added a massive amount of value to it. Whichever way you look at it, this is a real success story. Six months ago, Faz and Sharma took on a huge triple bill to massively increase the size of their house on a budget of £150,000. So if the money runs out and you've only got half of this done, what will happen? It would be a nightmare. Yeah, it would be a nightmare. But budget worries didn't stop them making things up as they went along. So it's decision time. The wall stays. Then we lose the open plan. Yep. There were a few crazy ideas along the way, like demolishing walls because the doors didn't fit, and a funnily placed loo. What really concerns me about this layout is that you've got the loo opening into this open plan living room. Now Faz and Sharma are £15,000 over budget and dipping into their savings. Hello, hi. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm fine, how are you doing? Very well. They still need to buy room dividers for the newly extended living space. So with the budget in tatters, they really need an affordable option. So what sort of a divider had you got in mind? Something sort of full wood. The thing is ideally you've got oak. the oak veneer doors. So what sort of price have you come up with so far? If you start off with a very basic, it's sort of 1000 plus. But I think something that we would want would be closer to the 2000 plus. Now, I have got a suggestion which is much more affordable, and I want you to stay open minded and come and have a look. OK. This is actually a way of dividing up the space for a fraction of that cost. The idea comes from Japan, and that's yeah. how mm. they closed off sections of yeah. the space. Sliding paper and bamboo panels, or shoji screens, have been used in Japan since the 12th century. This would be £800 as opposed to £2,500. Right. I don't know, it just Quite seems a bit flimsy, flimsy. to me. <laughs> when I first saw it, I thought, oh, that's a bit cheap and tacky. Yeah. <laughs> but then when Sarah explained the rationale behind it and mm. what you can do with it, started being a bit more open to the idea. It, it's uh, certainly a cheaper option as well. Mm. And let's be honest, cheaper is much needed at this point. For more information about extending your home or increasing your floor space, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash Sarah. Six months ago, the Siddiqui's began making their house twice the size with a two-storey side extension, an extension at the rear and a loft conversion. Now this ambitious triple build is complete. The exterior looks stunning. But their plans for the interior layout were always my biggest worry. At times, the Siddiqui's project has been a little bit of a comedy of errors. They started out with a loo opening into the dining room and then Faz demolished most of upstairs so that the doors would fit. But I'm hoping that they've ended up with their perfect dream home. 
But on a serious note, though, making it up as they went along has really badly affected their finances. Hi, hello, hello. how are you? Thank Hi, you. welcome. Good to see you. For the last seven years, the Siddiqui family have been outgrowing their home and dreaming of more space for their big family get-togethers. By building a rear extension, they've been able to transform their living spaces. Oh my goodness. How fabulous. <laughs> oh, you must love it. Yeah, it's a complete transformation. I mean, it's such a lovely space, it really is. It works so well now. And what you wanted was lots of entertaining space for your very big family. Mm -hmm. And looking at it now, I can see how this is likely to work really yeah. well. We're actually quite excited about having everybody over and seeing how they're going to use the space. The only downside is it probably looks like you're entertaining every weekend rather than someone <laughs> else's house. <laughs> These rooms are fantastic, and the good news is they've ended up with very stylish but very affordable room dividers. That's absolutely fantastic. Isn't that lovely? Mm. This is such a flexible space. You've got this very grown-up formal space, and really easily and quickly, you can slide this back. And suddenly, you've got this vast expanse <laughs> and a door. Please tell me this isn't the loo, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Have a loo. Oh, no, you. <laughs> Toilet, we've moved over there. All oh, right, great. So, oh, there we are. That's great, because lavatory business and dining rooms are probably best kept a bit separated, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Next door in the kitchen, Sharma had struggled with the lack of cooking space for their massive family get-togethers. But by extending it to the rear, Sharma now has room to cook for parties and masses more counter space with this sleek kitchen island. And this is one of the major motivations for doing this project, was the kitchen, wasn't it? You wanted a lovely kitchen. Is this what you dreamt of? It is. It really is. I've always wanted the kitchen to be the hub of the house, and now it really can because I've got space for everyone to come round. Initially, the main issue is you were short on storage, yeah. and now there are loads of cupboards no here. With storage. I mean, obviously, before I had this pokey little kitchen with, you know, my little hob, and whereas now I've got this wonderful six-burner hob, which I can now use and cook big, big, pots and you know I'm really looking forward to it. I know it was a bit painful the decision about how much of this wall you should take down because you didn't want to be isolated here in the kitchen. The amount of wall that you've ended up with is the right amount of wall. It looks great and really really makes this space work. Mm. Next to the kitchen the two-story side extension has given them extra entertaining space and they've added more of those lovely Japanese panel blinds. Up in the loft, Faz and Sharma have created a luxurious master bedroom suite and seem to have been inspired to have lots of clever built-in storage. On the first floor, all the walls have been rebuilt after Faz's door disaster. And in the new side extension, there's another bedroom suite. It's lovely big room, it's gorgeous. Amazing to think that this just wasn't here. This is the roof of the garage we're yes. standing on, isn't it? It's huge. I mean, we, we just didn't have this space before, and now we do. It's absolutely brilliant. And this is the bathroom. It's amazing, isn't it, to think that all five of you shared one bathroom, and now this is just one of the en suites. You've got another two bathrooms on top. Mm. Yeah. Absolute luxury. But it looks like Faz might have come up with one last slightly eccentric idea. So what's that? Is that the doorbell? No, it's our uh, intercom system. When it's dinner time, I can phone up and go, it's dinner time without having to yell. I'm going to be really honest. Yeah. It's a bit it's mental, I have to say. That's okay. my idea. It's, yeah, it's his idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's your idea. Can they ring down and go, uh, gin and tonic, please? Yeah. <laughs> this ambitious triple build hasn't been easy, but ultimately their hard work has paid off and the house looks fantastic. But have they managed to get the space they wanted for half the cost of moving to that dream house? When we set out on this project, we went to your dream house that you'd have loved to have bought. Mm. It was £800,000, mm. which would have meant that you'd need another £400,000 to yeah. buy it. Yeah. So you had £150,000, didn't you, yeah. to spend? And we've spent it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> and then some. <laughs> when we first found out we'd gone 15 over, that, at that point I was like, <gasps> 
But actually, spending £165,000, you've ended up with the same sized house mm. for less than half yes. the cost of moving. That makes me feel much, much better about the overspend. Yes. <laughs> Even though they've dug into their savings to fund the £15,000 overspend, do the sums work? Faz and Sharma couldn't afford the £400,000 they needed to move to their dream house. But by spending £165,000 on this build, they now have a house twice the size for less than half the cost of moving. And I have more good news. The house was worth probably about £400,000 it yes. was. And now... I think it would be quite reasonable to suppose that it would be worth around 740,000. Oh. That's, that's really quite good to know. <laughs> We've probably put about 175,000 pounds of equity into the house. Mm. I think all the struggle that we've gone through finding that out has made it all the more worthwhile. Well, congratulations. I think you've made a beautiful home for yourselves and most importantly it's your dream home. It fits exactly what your family needs. Well done. Thank you. Sharma and Faz needed a house that would not only accommodate their growing family, but also regular large-scale gatherings. By extending cleverly and playing around with the internal layout, they've ended up with exactly what they wanted. And the extra value they've created should take the pain out of their rather extravagant overspend. Next time, Fiona and Stuart have unusual reasons for extending. So you're extending the house to fit a gerbil. That's, That's the main <laughs> reason why we're doing it. Very expensive gerbil. <laughs> and Vicky's got big ideas, but will they come off? That's going to be like a whole wall of glass doors that will open. Okay. <laughs>